In celebration of this legend's new documentary, today we're going to go behind her very first hit with an in-depth breakdown from her legendary co-writer and co-producer, a man who is one of the greatest hit makers in music history. Uh, he tells us the story of how it all came together. Next on Professor of Rock, brought to you by Zenny Eyewear. Hey, music junkies, Professor of Rock, always here to celebrate the greatest artists and the greatest songs of all time. Join our community to travel back in time with us every single day to the greatest era, the rock and roll era, by subscribing below. Now, to help us curate this virtual music museum and be a part of our mission of keeping the music alive, plus get other content, check out our Patreon link below. All right, let's step into the time machine once again. We're going to set the circuits this time for May 17th, 1986. And this week, the King of Ballet, Mikhail Baryshnikov, who defected from the Soviet Union years before, became a U.S. citizen. Ken Cragen, who was one of the architects of We Are the World, prepares for Hands Across America, where it's estimated it's going to take at least 5.5 million people to complete the 4,125-mile route. In sports, it was the week that Mike Tyson defeated Mitch Green, remaining undefeated with 21 wins. What's going to happen? And in tennis, 16-year-old Steffi Graf upset Martina Navratola in the West German Women's Open. If you watch Saturday Night Live that week, it'd be hosted by Jimmy Breslin. Also has appearances uh, from marvelous Marvin Hagler and Sam Kinison. Oh man, love Sam Kinison. You could also watch uh, Knight Rider, Miami Vice, and Webster. What a time. If you want to head out to the cinema, you have plenty of options. There'd be Top Gun, Short Circuit, and Police Academy. Three, I mean, come on. Even better, the top seven songs on the Billboard Hot 100 are as follows. Take Me Home by Phil Collins at seven. Your Love by The Outfield at six. Live to Tell by Madonna at five. What Have You Done For Me Lately at four by Janet Jackson. Why Can't This Be Loved by Van Halen at three. West End Girls by The Pet Shop Boys at two. And The Greatest Love of All by Whitney Houston at the number one spot. I look at that top seven, just an absolute awe. Every one of those songs, really pretty classic. When is the last time the world has seen something that great in the top 40? The 80s were just phenomenal. I say it all the time. Look at the variety. All genres represented, all incredible artists, all songs that still resonate today. It's actually pretty mind-boggling when you really think about it. Today, we're going to go in depth on one of those songs in that Heavenly Seven. I wear this shirt once again in tribute. What Have You Done For Me Lately by legend, superstar, and in my opinion, the queen of pop, Miss Jackson to be precise, Janet Jackson. I mean, this was the opening shot from her multi-platinum pop juggernaut control with the legendary, and I mean legendary, duo of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis co-producing, co-writing. I mean, it was a recipe for pop perfection. Seriously, this song and many others in those two records, Control and Rhythm Nation 1814, along with uh, George Michael's Faith and Michael Jackson Thriller, in my opinion, those are the blueprint for the perfect pop record. Or more accurately, a how-to on crossing genres with ease and seducing the masses. I mean, name any superstar from today, Taylor Swift, Beyonce, Rihanna, in my opinion, none of them hold a candle to Janet. And it may seem strange for me to say this, uh, I think she's underrated. I mean, truly, Janet does not get near the credit that she deserves in the 80s and the 90s. She was almost unrivaled pop-wise. This song is a great example of just that. It has like four different melodies and each one of them could have been a hit song by itself. I mean, you think about the bridge, it's just as strong as the chorus. song received a nomination for Best Rhythm and Blues Song at the 87 Grammy Awards. As mentioned, the song peaked at number four on the Hot 100 here in the U.S., crossed many genres, hit number one on the R&B charts, it hit number two on the Dance Club Songs chart. Outside of America, it hit number one in the Netherlands, hit the top ten in Germany and in Switzerland and the U.K. The music video was also very iconic directed by Brian Jones and Piers Ashworth, and choreographed by future star Paula Abdul, who is also in the video. But what has he done for you lately? 
This is an undeniable pop classic. I mean, I love Janet's vocal on this part. And her take no BS attitude, tough talk. I was extremely fortunate to talk with Jimmy Jam about this album and the song. Here is the story of the song straight from him. Before we get into the interview, I do want to quickly mention our sponsor, Zenny Eyewear. They help us, our mission of keeping the music alive. If you go to the Zenny link below, you can customize your own glasses. Look, I had something put on the side here, Professor of Rock. You know, they're for a price not much more than a vinyl record. You can have them shipped right to your door. Check it out below. Here is Jimmy Jam. It's interesting because not only did she step out of Michael's shadow, she in some ways was like, Control was every bit as good as Thriller in so many ways because it was definitely influential. It definitely changed what 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 I thought the record ended up doing, and we had no clue that this would happen. I, I always said that record, we made that record for. Um, there was a there was a, a neighborhood we stayed in 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 L.A. Mm -hmm. It wasn't you know South Central or anything like that, yeah. but it was not the greatest neighborhood, I guess you could say, but. It was when you walked down the street, you heard music blasting out of everybody's house. Mm -hmm. And it was always whatever the best music was, the best, funkiest R&B or hip hop music. That's what was being played. And our goal with Control was to have our music being played in those houses. So when yeah. we walked down the street, that's what we would hear. We had no pop aspirations, which is always weird when people say, oh, it's such a great pop album. Yeah. We had no pop expectations. Because pop radio was not playing anything like Control. Of course, Control didn't exist, but everything that was R&B based was kind of soft. It was Lionel Richie, it was Patti LaBelle, Anita Baker. You know, it was more, if it was on, on pop, it was more that kind of thing. Even the rock groups were doing ballads. You know, pop radio was very kind of mellow and down tempo at that time. So what have you done for me lately really, I think, shook it up a little bit um, and obviously worked re so well on R&B radio that I think pop radio just kind of said, OK, what are they playing over there? OK, that Janet. OK, let's bring that over. Yeah. There. And, and so we, we didn't know as we were doing it that that would be the impact that it would have. Well, and it crossed over like what Thriller did where it became this crossover record. It didn't matter who you yeah. were, where you were from. I mean, that was just a record where you're like, man. I need to hear that because of all the songs on it. But what's interesting is that five number one hits on the R&B charts. Mm -hmm. Also, the only record in history that every song was one of the top five. Was, there was a number one, a number two, a number three, a number four, and a number five. Right. 14 million copies. You recorded it, though, also in Minneapolis. Also, I, I was yes. read because you wanted to kind of get away from that control. Oh, absolutely. Because Joseph kind of wanted her to be under his thumb there, and she... She was like taking control of her life. What have you done for me lately? What have you done for me lately? This song that you wrote it, the last song for the album. Y yes. Number one, Joe, who we met with, his advice or his, when we ask him, is there anything, sir, we can do? He said, you're from Minneapolis, right? And we said, yeah. He said, Prince is from Minneapolis. And we said, yeah. He said, don't have my daughter sounding like Prince. <laughs> that, that was, we said, oh no, Mr. Jackson, don't worry about it. You know, we, we got it. So yeah. that was the one thing. So that, yeah. that was, when you talked about that, that, that sparked that memory. Terry and I were doing our own album. We had gotten all the song. We were, thought we were done with the record. The title, What Have You Done For Me Lately?, came from a, um, there was something, we had this little thing on the on the wall that was a, uh, I don't know what it was, it was in a frame, but it said a client asking somebody, what have you done for me lately, or something like that, and it was one of those those things where the way you looked at it, it would like change, the face would change, and we just thought, man, that's a great title, and we always kept what we called the book of titles, so yeah. whenever we'd see a, a something that we caught our, our attention, we would always just write it in the book. The That's title sure worked book itself works. into the lexicon too. You oh, know? Yeah. I mean, the popular culture still said all the time, and it came from that song. And it's also your perfect one finger piano. I mean, <laughs> yeah. where, where did that, that kind of come from? Oh, the, you, uh, 
dun dun. <laughs> that little yeah, thing. or the or the dun 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 dun. dun oh you know? right. Well, that was kind of the in, that was very much an in, a Minneapolis influence type thing. Yeah, because those were the kind of um, those were the kind of chords we would play in the time. The difference was that. Um, we did it with uh, the sound is um, it's a sound I can't even pull up, but it's a, a synthesizer called OB8. And actually, the sound we used was almost like a steel drum sound, but I clipped the sound. So instead of instead of hearing like bing, it just goes click. And that was kind of this uh, we always called it stingy. Uh, uh, Terry called it a stingy bass. So we had this little boom, 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 boom. That little boom, 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 boom was actually a bridge to a different song. Really? Yes. And I was working on this song, this track. Terry walked in the studio. He's sitting there listening. It went to that change. And he said, oh, that change. That should just be this. That should be the song. I was like, really? I said, it's the bridge. He said, no, no, no. That should be the song. And I said, okay, cool. But he would always do that. If he'd hear me playing a bass line or something, he'd be like, no, 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 that would because he's a bass player. You know, so John McClain came up. We played him everything. We rode mm -hmm. around in a car and played it. He said, oh, I love it. I love it. He says, oh, this is great. This is great. He says, man, this is at least double platinum. And we're going, yeah, okay. You know, we're thinking now it might go gold. If we're lucky, it'll go gold. But he was, John was the most intense person I knew. When he loved something, uh, he would literally get on people's desks and convince them <laughs> you've got to play this this is the greatest thing ever so i yeah. mean that was kind of his attitude towards it so i remember we were he said as all a and r people do i just need one more and uh, we were like john you got come on man you got nasty and you got control and you got you know come on what do you need i need i just need one more he's i just need i don't know what it is he said i just need that one more so anyway yeah we're <laughs> like yeah whatever so we get in the car we go i think we're going to go have some dinner or something we said, John, let us play you some tracks from our album that we're working on. I'd say, cool. We started playing tracks. The track of what have you done, done for me lately comes on. He goes, that's it right there. That's the track I need right there. <laughs> and we're going, no, that's for our album, man. <laughs> no, no, no. I need That's the one I need. I need that album. I, I, that's Come on, man. Come on, man. You can't, can't shoot a three-pointer when you just need a layup, man. You can't. I mean, he had all these metaphors and all these yeah. sayings. And, you know, uh, said, John, here's what we'll do. The next day at the studio, I said, I'm going to put the song on. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just put the song on. I said, if Janet likes it, <laughs> Love it. she can have it. If she doesn't say anything, then it's not, we're going to keep it. So the next day at the studio, we go in. Outside the door of our studio is like a couch. Janet would always sit on the couch until we were ready to go. I had the door open. I put the song on. Janet's sitting on the couch watching TV. <laughs> I see her like literally she's watching TV. And then I see her kind of turn towards me. <laughs> and then she kind of looks and then she kind of gets a, kind of a nasty look on her face. And then she gets up from the couch and she stands in the doorway and she kind of leans against the door. And she goes, who's that for? <laughs> and I said, you, if you want it. She said, oh, I want it. Wow. One of my favorite interviews ever. I mean, seriously, Jimmy and Terry are geniuses. And Janet Jackson will... Let me just say that it's been widely talked about that Michael Jackson, in his competitive nature, was always worried about what Prince was doing. I think he should have been more worried about his sister. Janet is pop personified. Leave us a comment about this legend and this album and song. What are your memories that are tied to it? to get Janet's music and merch. I mean, this shirt right here, click on the links below if you dig the content. We invite you to subscribe to be a part of the community. If you wanna join our mission of curating the greatest of the rock here, a literal museum here on YouTube, click on our Patreon link and check out the Zenny link to customize your own pair of glasses below. Until next time, three chords and the truth, my friends. Stay safe out there, keep the music alive.